Hey, what is up you guys? My name is Catherine and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be diving into the drama and testing out the Jaclyn Hill and Morphe Dark Magic Palette. So for those of you who are not familiar with these palettes, there are four palettes in the Vault Collection and they retail for $15 each. You can get them from either Morphe's website or from Ulta. And if you get it from Morphe, you can also get all four palettes for $49. Right now it says that they are sold out, but let's be real, we all know that they're gonna make this collection permanent. We just know. This is what the Dark Magic palette actually looks like. I chose this palette because it's honestly one of the most unique palettes that I have seen released in eyeshadow world for quite some time now and I don't have most of these colors in my collection so I thought it'd be really really fun to try these out and I'm just gonna pop some swatches of this palette up on the screen as well all right so we have poof power cut Shh, trickery diversion potion busted inside job mojo and temptress so this palette swatches interestingly to say the least but we more care about how it performs on the eyes than how it swatches it just is very interesting to swatch this palette for those of you who lead productive lives and haven't been keeping up with the drama in the beauty community there has been a heck Ton of drama surrounding this teensy little palette and its three siblings but I'm not gonna focus on the drama around the palette too much don't forget to subscribe to my channel I post new videos every Wednesday and Sunday and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you are living for this unique cool toned color scheme because I know I am and let's get started all right, so my brows are done. I have primed, concealed, and powdered my eyelids, and I am ready to uh, test out this palette. I'm gonna start out with this shade Potion right here. It's that very, um, it's called Split Pea Soup Green, I guess. So I'm gonna go into that shade with a Beach Cosmetics Studio Pro 16. I don't really have many Morphe brushes that I can test these out with. And the shade definitely is needing some love to be workable. You can see that that is pretty patchy on the eye. And I've been sitting here blending and trying to work this into the skin. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop that onto the other eye as well. Potion definitely took some effort to work with. It's not really an easy shade to work with. Side note, I always feel like when I have just like a straight up cool toned color in my crease that I sort of look like Tim Curry and I don't know if I'm the only one who feels that way. In my outer corner, I'm going to be putting the shade Inside Job. That's this very dark matte forest green color. I'm gonna be using an AOA Studio E125 brush for that. And I'm gonna blend out those edges with that same BH Cosmetics 16 brush. I'm just blending it out. I'm not blending it over because I don't want the crease to be overwhelmingly dark, even though this is the uh, dark magic palette. That shade inside job actually blended pretty easily. Uh, which is sort of surprising because I often find that darker colors are harder to work with But it did blend into that green very nicely. It did fade a bit as it was blending, but it doesn't look horrible I might add some more of that color after we add our lid shade just to add some more depth, but we will see Next I'm going in on the flat end of a Naked 2 brush and I'm going into the shade Trickery. It's that shimmery forest green that we have going on there. And y'all know the drill, I pretty much always wet my shimmer shadows or use my finger. 
but when we're doing a palette review, I just always have to see how they function dry. I'm actually going to use the other end of the Naked 2 brush because I think for what I'm going for that's going to function better. And then I'm spritzing that with my Heritage Store Rose Water and Glycerin. Rave about that in every video. Okay, so this shade doesn't really have a lot of shimmer. It just sort of looks the same as Inside Job. Like, there's not really a difference here. I'm actually going to try this on my finger just to see how that functions on the finger. I actually think that applied best with the finger, which is cool, I guess. So I don't actually want this to be like an unblended cut crease look, so I'm going to go back into Potion on the BH Cosmetics 16. And we're just going to apply that to those edges and try to get them nice and blended. I definitely don't think that we need a trickery and inside job in this palette. Like you can see that there's no difference between those two shades on the eye. It actually looks quite muddy, so what we're going to do to add some definition, we're not going to add more inside job. We're actually going to go into Temptress, this black shade. I'm sure everyone wants to see how that performs as well. So I'm going into that on a ColourPop blending brush, and that's going into the outer corner. One thing that I will note is I didn't put foundation on because I wasn't sure what the fallout situation was going to be and there's almost no fallout so that's a plus. I'm just going to blend out the edge of that black. And I am going to add some color to the remaining portion of my upper eyelid but I'm going to do my foundation first so I'll be right back. Alright so under my eye I am also going to put inside job. And I'm going to do that on an AOA Studio E114 brush. I'm just going to blend that out with the Coastal Scents Pro Fluff blending brush. And I'm going in on this pointy Kylie Cosmetics brush into the shade Power Cut, this taupe-ish silver shade. And again, I'm going to try this dry. That's going to go on the inside. Yeah, we're definitely gonna want that. Getting Slytherin vibes from this eye look. I feel like the inner corner just is not bringing enough life to the eye look, like combined with the fact that the shimmer green is not actually very shimmery. What is this shadow? I don't understand. This silver just needs some more silver, so I'm going to add my NYX Liquid Crystal Body Liner in Liquid Silver? Crystal Silver. Over top of that silver shadow. It's just not bringing enough light to the eye look. teensy bit of kaleidoscope from my ColourPop Dream Street palette just right there as like a final eye opening pop and I'm gonna go do some liner and mascara and I'll be right back okay so whole look is done you can have a look at how the eyeshadow works with everything else so I took a break to eat some green beans and I definitely don't agree with Morphe's claim that these are the creamiest shades. Maybe if you're using powder creamer in your morning coffee, but other than that, like these are definitely not creamy. The only ones that I could even begin to describe as creamy are these metallic-y shimmers, which that's really not that impressive to have a creamy shimmer formula. We've all seen that. 
um, it would be much, much more impressive to have a creamy dark blue matte and dark green matte, but that's just not the case with these. However, I still think this is workable. I don't think that this is one of those hidden gems where you pay $15 for an eyeshadow palette and you're getting $50 or $60 quality eyeshadows out of it. I think that this is one of those cases where you're paying $15 for an eyeshadow palette and you're getting $15 of value out of it. I don't think that these would be the most workable eyeshadows for a beginner, however, I don't think that this color scheme really screams beginner anyways, so I don't think that this would really attract beginners to it. I think a beginner would be much, much more attracted to the original Jaclyn Hill and Morphe palette, or I guess it's the second because she did release one forever ago, but it definitely inspires creativity like I don't own anything else in my collection and for that I am really happy that I bought it. I obviously was able to work with them and I mean the quality of this is better, way better than the Creative Soul Cosmetics Harmony palette that I bought and did a video on maybe a month ago and that was way more expensive than this so I definitely am satisfied with my purchase. I think if you're someone that only uses high-end eyeshadows like Natasha Denona, Anastasia, Makeup Forever, eyeshadows you're going to be disappointed with this but if you're someone that tends to use more ColourPop, Beach Cosmetics, maybe throw an Urban Decay palette in there once in a while like I do you're going to be a lot more satisfied with this especially if you're just looking to expand your color range and you're not looking for the world's best eyeshadows. I like this enough that I think I might actually pick up the Bling Boss eyeshadow palette at some point. I know it's sold out right now but we all know that they're going to make these palettes permanent like we all know. Let me know if you guys would like to see me do more tutorials with this palette. I'd be more than happy to do so. I'm definitely going to have a ton of fun playing around with this but if not not. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys on Wednesday. Laya, bye!